What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, you will be learning about common peripheral devices such as printers, scanners, keyboards, and more. And you're going to learn how to install them, whether it's a straightforward plug and play setup or a more complex driver installation. So before we get into the installation and configuration process, let's define what peripheral devices are. So peripherals are external devices that connect to your computer to add capabilities or perform specific tasks. And they can be input devices like keyboards and mice, output devices like printers and speakers, or devices that handle both input and output. And here are some common peripheral devices and their functions. So we got printers. These are output devices that produce hard copies of digital documents, photos, or other content. You have scanners. These are input devices used to convert physical documents into digital format. You have keyboards and mice. These are essential input devices for interacting with your computer. You have webcams. These are input devices for capturing video or photos, often used for video calls. We have external drives. Storage devices like external hard drives or USB drives are used for backup or additional storage. You have speakers and headsets. These are output devices for audio, including music, calls, and notifications. You have various displays, and these are output devices that allow visual display of information from your computer. And then we have what is called an UPS or an uninterruptible power supply. And this provides backup power to keep your devices running in the event of a power outage. All right, so when installing and configuring these devices, there are two primary installation types to consider. The first one is the plug and play installation, and then we have what is called driver installation. So let's talk about plug and play installation. So modern operating systems like Windows, Mac, and Linux, they often support plug and play devices. This means that when you connect a device to the computer, the operating system will automatically detect it, locate the appropriate drivers, and set it up for use without any further user intervention. And examples of this include most keyboards, mice, basic printers, and USB storage devices. And then we have what is called driver installation. So some devices require additional drivers to work correctly, especially those with advanced functionality. And a driver, this is software that allows the operating system to communicate with the hardware device. These drivers are usually provided by the device manufacturer and can be downloaded from their website or installed from a disk. And installing drivers can involve running a setup program which configures the device and adds management software for additional settings. All right, now, so let's walk through the installation and configuration of some common peripherals, and we'll start with printers. So the first type is the plug and play printer. So many printers today are plug and play. So when connected via USB, the operating system will detect and install them automatically. And for basic use, this installation is usually sufficient. Then we have advanced printer setup. So network printers, they require connecting to a wireless or ethernet network. So what you wanna do, you wanna go to the control panel on Windows or the system preferences on your Mac and navigate to printers and scanners and select add a printer. For IP-based printers, you may need to manually enter the printer's IP address during setup and the printer should come with a manual detailing how to find this information. If the printer supports web-based configuration, you would access it by typing the printer's IP address into a web browser to change settings like network preferences or firmware updates. And then we have driver installations for printers. So you want to download the latest drivers from the manufacturer's website. You want to run the installation program, which may include additional software for print management and customization of settings like print quality or paper type. Next peripheral device is scanners. So the first one is a USB scanner. So most modern scanners are plug and play. And once connected, you can use scanning software provided by the operating system like Windows, Fax and Scan, or third-party software for more advanced options. And we have what is called an all-in-one printer slash scanner. So if using an all-in-one device, you wanna ensure that both printing and scanning drivers are installed. And often the software package will install both components and we have driver installation for scanners. So advanced scanners, especially those with features like OCR, which stands for optical character recognition, they may require specific drivers. And also you want to visit the manufacturer's website, download the appropriate drivers and follow the setup instructions. 
All right, the next peripheral devices are keyboards and mice. So standard keyboards and mice, they are often plug and play requiring no additional configuration. For USB or wireless options, you would simply connect the device and the operating system will detect it automatically. Then we have advanced or customizable devices. Some gaming keyboards or mice, which offer programmable keys, RGB lighting, or other features. They require a driver installation and you want to install the software provided by the manufacturer to customize customize the settings. Next up, we have webcams. So most modern webcams are plug and play, especially if connecting via USB and the operating system will automatically detect the webcam and make it available for use in applications like Zoom, Skype, or other built-in camera software. And then for webcams with advanced features like adjustable resolutions or filters, it's best to install the driver and additional software provided by the manufacturer for full functionality. Next, we have external drives. So we have USB drives and external hard drives, and these devices are typically plug and play as well. So once connected, they will show up as external storage in your file explorer. Now, external drives, they can be formatted as needed depending on the operating system. Then we have driver installation. So some specialized drives like external SSDs or RAID configurations, they may require driver installation for optimal performance. Next, we have speakers and headsets. So basic speakers and headsets that connect via a 3.5 millimeter jack or USB are usually plug and play. And to configure the audio output, just simply go to the sound settings on your operating system, or you can select the device, adjust the volume and configure the input output settings. Then we have Bluetooth speakers and headsets that need to be paired with the computer. You will go to the Bluetooth settings on your operating system, ensure the device is in pairing mode and connected. For advanced headsets with surround sound or gaming features, installing the manufacturer's software is recommended for full access to customization settings. Next, we have displays. So monitors usually connect via HDMI, DisplayPort, VGA, or USB-C. And most displays are plug and play and will be recognized automatically by the operating system. For multi-monitor setups, you wanna go to the display settings to configure resolution, orientation, and position. Smart TVs and projectors, they often require a wired connection such as an HDMI cable or wireless casting such as Miracast or Chromecast. And once connected, you can adjust the display settings on both the computer and the display device to ensure proper screen resolution and aspect ratio. Now, while most monitors don't need additional drivers, specialty displays such as touchscreen monitors or VR displays, they might require them. So always refer to the manufacturer's guidelines. And finally, we have the UPS or the uninterruptible power supply. So in UPS, this provides backup power during a power outage, allowing you to safely shut down your computer. And it often includes surge protection to safeguard against power surges. So when it comes to the installation and configuration, you wanna connect the UPS to the computer and the wall outlet. You wanna install any monitoring software provided by the manufacturer, which allows you to check battery status, set alerts and configure power saving options. So to sum all of this up, Installing and configuring peripherals depends on the device type and complexity. While plug and play makes setup simple for many devices, others require driver installations or network configurations. And understanding the setup process for each type of device is crucial for troubleshooting and ensuring that peripherals work correctly with your system. All right, now let's get into this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, you have connected a new printer to your computer via USB. USB. After connecting it, the computer displays a message stating that the device is ready to use. Which type of installation is this an example of? Would this be a manual driver installation? Would this be an IP based installation? Would this be a plug and play installation or would this be a web based configuration? And the correct answer is this is a plug and play installation. So plug and play, this allows devices to be automatically recognized and configured by the operating system without requiring additional user intervention or manual driver installation. Next question, a user needs to connect a scanner to their computer. 
but they cannot get it to function properly. You find that the scanner is not being detected automatically. What is the most likely next step to resolve this issue? Would it be to restart the computer? Would it be to install the manufacturer's drivers manually? Would it be to connect the scanner to a different USB port? Or would it be to run a virus scan? And the correct answer would be you want to install the manufacturer's drivers manually. So if a peripheral device like a scanner is not detected automatically, the issue may be due to the absence of the correct drivers. Manually installing the drivers from the manufacturer's website is often necessary to ensure proper functionality. And the final question is, a user wants to connect a wireless printer to their home network so all devices can access it. Which of the following steps should they most likely perform to achieve this? Would they install drivers for each device? Would they configure the printer's IP address settings via the web interface? Would they connect the printer to a computer via USB? Or would they enable the printer's built-in display mode? And the correct answer is they would configure the printer's IP address settings via the web interface. So to connect the wireless printer to a network, the user typically needs to configure the printer's network settings. This often involves using the printer's web-based interface to set up the IP address and wireless settings so all devices on the network can communicate with it.